Hello, Internet students. Welcome back to the Arduino Basics tutorial series. This is lesson number 20, final lesson of this series. Well done for making it this far. In this lesson, we're going to do a collision detector using an ultrasonic sensor. We're also going to add in a buzzer and an LCD display so we can track our distance away from an object like a wall and also have a buzzer as an audible alarm if we get too close to that object. This is the same type of sensor technology that's used in robotics in order to detect walls and collisions. So we're going to be building this setup today. Let's have a look at the wiring to start things off. You'll need an ultrasonic sensor, a buzzer, an LCD display with an I2C chip. Let's start with the LCD and review that wiring. The ground from the LCD I2C is going into the ground channel. The voltage is going into voltage or 5 volt. The data pin is going to A4 and the S clock, SCL, the clock pin is going to A5. Our standard buzzer, very simple wiring. The left or the ground is going to ground and the right is going into pin number 4. Here's our ultrasonic sensor. Clearly labeled pins, VCC, trig, echo, and ground. VCC going direct to voltage, ground going direct to ground, trigger we're going to send to pin 10, and echo we're going to send to pin 11. Now I also brought in a 9 volt battery and the adapter for my Arduino so that I can power this and walk around with it after the code's been pushed to it because it's not a whole lot of use to you when it's just sitting on your computer desk. Now that we've covered the wiring, meet me over in the software and we'll have a look at the coding for this project. Here we are in our coding interface. I've got a new file set up for lesson number 20. And we're gonna jump right into the code. First off, let's look at libraries and variables that we're gonna want for our class. Let's start off with our library. We have to bring in our Liquid Crystal I2C library. It's gonna let us work with our LCD display. I'm gonna bring in three pins for our trigger pin, our echo pin, and our buzzer pin. Trigger pin is 10, echo pin is 11, buzzer pin is four. I made these constant integers. I have two variables to use with my ultrasonic sensor. I have a long for duration. This is a different type, of kind of like an unsigned integer. I have a float for distance. Then I'm gonna set up my LCD object for my LCD display. So liquid crystal underscore I2C LCD 0x24 comma 20 comma 4 sets up my 16 by 2 line display for this particular LCD. This is our setup for the variables and the libraries that we need to work with in our file. Let's jump into the setup function and get everything initialized. In our setup function, we're going to set up our serial monitor so that we can use it for debug statements. We won't be using the serial monitor in real time because we're going to be running this off a of battery, so we're not going to have access to the serial monitor during that. So we're, that's why we're using the LCD display as well because once we're portable, we still want to be able to track the distance values that are being read. We set up our pins as outputs and inputs. Buzzer and trigger are out. The echo pin is an input. So for the ultrasonic sensor, we want to read in on the echo pin and we'll send out to the trigger. Initialize the LCD. So we do an init and a backlight to get the LCD initialized and turned on. Now we're ready to jump into our loop function where we're going to have to deal with our ultrasonic sensor to get the reading from the sensor. So there are three steps required to get the distance from an ultrasonic sensor. The first step is we want to clear the trigger pin by sending a low to it and having a really, really short delay just to make sure that we're not getting any false readings. Then we're going to send a high to the trigger pin, wait a tiny fraction, send a low to the trigger pin. That lets it know that we're going to be reading the echo pin, which is going to tell us the actual time that the wave took to travel to a surface and back to the sensor. So we clear our trigger pin by doing a digital write trigger pin low. We do a delay microseconds too. So very, very, very short, quick delay. We then set the trigger pin to high for about 10 microseconds. So we do a digital write high, wait the 10 microseconds, do a, a digital write low. Now we're ready to read the value that comes in from the echo pin. Now the echo pin is gonna give us the time, the duration that the sound wave took to travel from the sensor to the object and back to the sensor in microseconds. Once we've done this kind of sequence of clearing the trigger pin and then doing the 10 microsecond burst on the trigger pin, we're ready to read echo pin. So we do a duration, which is our variable that we've stored, equals pulse in echo pin high. This is gonna read it as a microsecond value for how long it took the wave to travel there and back. So now that we have the duration that the sound wave took, 
we want to find the distance. So the math equation here is distance equals speed multiplied by time. So we know the time, it's the duration variable, and we know the speed because we know the speed of sound. Now we have to convert it because we're dealing with microseconds. So we have to deal with the speed of sound in reference to microseconds. So let's look at the math equation and break it down. The speed of sound in centimeters per microsecond is 0.034. So when this is all said and done, we're gonna have a value in centimeters. And then I'm dividing it by 200. And the reason 200, I'm dividing it by 100 to convert it to meters and dividing it by two to get rid of the fact that the sound wave has to travel away and then back. So I need to cut the distance in half, essentially. So that's why I'm devising by 200. So when this is done, I'm gonna have a value for distance that's in meters, okay? Because I'm taking microseconds here multiplied by centimeters over microseconds. So the microseconds cancel, leaving me with centimeters. Then I divide by 100, which gives me meters, and I divide by two to cut the distance in half, and I have my answer in meters. Now that we have the distance calculated, we're gonna print it to the debug, so print it to the serial, and we're also gonna display it on our LCD display, and then we'll bring our buzzer in for that sound. We'll start with a debug statement, serial.println. Now, I brought in a different way of formatting this here just to show you that when we're concatenating floats and longs into single strings, instead of doing a bunch of print and print line statements, we can bring it all as a string object by using string with a capital S brackets and then put the thing that we want to be defined as a string object instead of a string literal. It's a C thing in terms of the programming language. And this just lets it all be treated like objects similar to what you'd see in a Python or a Java string concatenation. So string distance plus the var variable distance string distance plus the variable distance plus the string m. We'll print it out as meters. And then to the LCD display, we set the cursor at zero, zero. I print distance, I set the cursor at zero, one. I print the distance value converted to a string object. I set the cursor at six, one, and then I print m for meters. The reason I brought it over to six, one is because sometimes, depending on how far away, the sensor I have works to about 23 meters. And so sometimes my values are double digits, sometimes they're single digits. So if I didn't do that, then the M sometimes doesn't fit right and you end up with an M and then another M gets displayed after it because I went from a two digit to a one digit number. And so it was easier to just say, you know what, let's space it out and we'll put the M far enough away that even a two digit number is not gonna cause a problem. And that's why I did it that way. Now we're gonna be reading the value from the ultrasonic sensor. We're gonna be displaying it on the serial and on the LCD. Next up, we need to bring our buzzer into play. So we'll use an if and an else statement to determine whether we're close enough to trigger the buzzer. So we want the buzzer to go off if we're under a meter away from the object. If my distance is less than one, then I'll turn the tone on for the buzzer pin at a frequency of 300, else I do no tone. So the buzzer will turn off if I'm not less than one meter away. And then I'll put a half second delay between the readings on the ultrasonic sensor. And that's it. This is going to read the value from the ultrasonic sensor. It's gonna display that value as meters on the serial monitor as well as on the LCD display. If the distance value is under one meter, then it's gonna turn the buzzer on. If the distance value is greater than a meter, then it's gonna turn the buzzer off. Let's push it out and let's have a look at how it works. So here we are, the code's been pushed out to the Arduino. You can see my distance readings coming through the serial monitor. I'm coming in around 1.6 meters right now. If I move this a little closer to the door. And you can see my buzzer starts going off when I get under a meter. If I come away, it's working just fine. If I stick my hand in front of it, you can hear the buzzer go off and you can see the meter readings change. And you can see the LCD display is showing the value in meters in terms of the distance away from the object. That's it for the base lesson. Great job, and we'll see you back in the extension in just a second. All right, great job in the base lesson. Uh, for our extension for this activity, we're gonna take our buzzer, and instead of just having the one tone that happens consistently under a meter, we're gonna narrow it down and give it a little bit more of like a stutter pattern. So we're gonna have the buzzer start to beep between one meter and 0 0.5 meters from the object, kind of a slower frequency. So beep, beep, beep. And then if we get under 0 0.5 meters, it increases in frequency. So let me show you how that would work. 
So if I get my object, so if I have my object a little over a meter away, so I'm at 0 0.6 right now, you can hear the beeping pattern. Now if I get closer, it picks up in pace. So that's what we're looking for in terms of this project, that extra emphasis on the beeps when we get under a meter just works better if it's working as a detection alarm, especially for somebody who's visually impaired, knowing that you're getting closer to colliding with that object by the extra beeps, it's just gonna increase the usefulness of the project. So that's it for the extension. We'll see you back in a second for the challenge. For the challenge, I want you to add in three LEDs to your circuit. We're gonna add in a red, a yellow, and a green LED to the circuit. And we're gonna have the green LED be on as long as there's nothing within two meters of the sensor. If you get between two meters and one meter, I want the yellow LED to be on. And if we get under a meter, I want that red LED to be on. This just adds in that extra visual element in terms of collision detection. So green if we're over two meters, yellow between one and two, and red for under one. Okay, let's have a quick look at a demo of how this thing will work when it's all said and done. So there you have it. That is the end of lesson number 20 and the end of our main lessons for the Arduino Basics tutorial series. We do plan on doing some larger project extension videos, so stay tuned for those. And remember, if you like what we're doing, please like the video and subscribe to our channel as we've got plans to continue creating content for you. Have a great day. Thanks. <music>